before we continue with today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to this Raptor. Now, this Raptor is a platform that allows you, the normal, regular investor, not the VIP dude in the bank, to invest in private companies. Companies like SpaceX, like Neuralink, all things they've organized in the past. Now, on the platform, you'll find loads of information about the company, about the fee structure, about the deal structure, about the risks. Now, right now, they're organizing an investment in a company called Anthropic. Now, Anthropic is a company that just raised $4 billion from Amazon as a strategic partner, not just as an investor. They're actually going to be working with Amazon with AWS. Now, Anthropic was founded in 2021 by former OpenAI employees, their former VP of research, and their former lead engineer for ChatGPT3, guys who came on and started this platform. Now, they've actually developed a platform called the Cloud3 Opus, which is a competitor to ChatGPT4 and Gemini One Ultra. They've already raised $7.6 billion from investors based on a $17 billion valuation, and they're building a better, safer, and easier to use platform than the OpenAI ChatGPT. Now, if you'd like to apply as an investor for Anthropic, you have to be an accredited investor. That's important. Also, so the minimum amount is $10,000. If that suits you, go do some further research by clicking on the link below in my description. And again, thank you for this Raptor for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to it. So Palantir is supposedly extremely expensive right now. Everybody keeps telling me that Palantir is overvalued. Cool. Let's take a look at this. This was Palantir three years ago on the money. 9th of April, 2021. It was trading for $24.04 right about here. From 9th of April of 2021 all the way to current day, the stock lost a dollar and a half. Basically, it's now trading 6% cheaper than it was three years ago. So Palantir over the past three years lost 6% of its stock price. Now, even though recently we've seen this 170% spike over the past year, it still didn't recover all the way to $24, which exactly it had three years ago. So the question is, if Palantir actually lost 6% in three years of its share price, what happened to the business? Because the share price has to correlate with the business, right? Well, let's take a look at the business. On the business side, what we can see here is something really interesting. Revenue for the past three years is up 103%. Gross profit is up 142%. Operating expenses are down 12.5%. Operating income is up 110%. Net income is up 118%. And free cash flow is up 325 freaking percent over the past three years. Let's keep scrolling all the way down to the cash. Cash and short-term investments are up 82.7% over the past three years. Total assets up 70% over the past three years. Total liabilities down 17.7% of the past three years. That is good. Total debt down 50% of the past three years. So over the past three years, Palantir has doubled its revenue, more than doubled its gross profit, reduced its operating expenses, doubled its net income, doubled its operating income, tripled its free cash flow, reduced by one-fifth its liabilities, cut in half its debt, increased its assets by 70%, and almost doubled its cash and short-term investments. In that same time frame, the stock lost 6%. Now, obviously, what we have here is a little bit of a cluster frickery, because there's no way in hell that a company does this in three years, loses 6% of its value. Obviously, the stock is going one way, the business is going another way. Now look, I understand that everybody right now looking at this, price to earnings ratio of 234. Oh my God, it is so expensive. Listen, they've just became profitable. This number is meaningless. What you need to be looking at is right here, forward PE. That is the next year's numbers. And that gives us a 56 price to earnings. So when you talk about Palantir, you have to understand you're talking about a 56 forward PE. So that's a 56 PE company. Let's say 57 PE company. Now, the price to sales, again, is not cheap. It's absolutely insanely high, 21 sales. I get it. It's an expensive company. But still, at 56, 57 PE, that's not horrible, especially given the insane numbers you're seeing here on the screen. So let's compare Snowflake to Palantir. Snowflake is a similarly sized company at $50 billion. They are not directly competing with Palantir, but a lot of people keep comparing them. So let's do it right here. So 
Palantir is not growing as fast as Snowflake with revenues, right? Revenues, Snowflake is up 374%. Palantir is only up 100%. Same thing with gross profit, you know, 442 versus 142. Both are growing nicely, but definitely Snowflake has the edge. But when you look at operating expenses, you see, Snowflake had to increase their operating expenses by 234% over the past two years in order to generate all this massive revenue, which means they have a scalability problem. At the same time, Palantir actually reduced their operating expenses. So while Snowflake is spending 234% more on operating expenses to generate 374% of revenue increase, Palantir is actually spending 12.5% less to give us 100% revenue increase. Which one is better? Which one is more scalable? Which one will win long term? I think you understand the answer. The scalability here is absolutely insane. And to me, it's kind of laughable how people talked about Palantir as a consultancy, as a not scalable business. It's absolutely amusing. Look at operating income. Operating income for Snowflake based on these empty calories right here, because these are empty calories, because look at operating income. Operating income is down 100% for the past two years, while Palantir is up 110%. Once we get out of the empty calorie region right here in revenues, you see what's going on in the hood. Look at net income. Down 55% for Snowflake, up 120% for Palantir. Look at free cash flow. Now, free cash flow wise, they definitely are absolutely insane. Both of these have phenomenal numbers. Snowflake is up 940%. Palantir is up 325%. So both of them are killing it on free cash flow. Good for them. Now, we go down to the cash and short term investments. And while Palantir almost doubled their cash position at 83% increase, Snowflake actually lost a little bit of money. Look at total assets. Palantir is up 70%. Snowflake is up 40%. Look at total liabilities. Palantir is down 17.7%. That's good. They've reduced liabilities by almost 18%. At the same time, Snowflake had to take on 200% more liabilities to grow the business. Look at total debt. Up 40% of the past three years for Snowflake. Down 50% for Palantir. And now let's look at the ratios because now we've seen which is the better company, right? We've seen which one has the better engine, which one is looking better under the hood and which one has empty calories. So you got Snowflake right here trading at 18 time sales. Palantir is trading at 21 time sales. Not a huge difference. And this is a Warren Buffett company. Warren Buffett is a huge fan of Snowflake at 18 time sales. Palantir has better fundamentals at slightly higher price to sales. Not a huge difference. Not a huge difference at all. Look at forward PE. Snowflake is trading at 109 forward PE. Palantir is at 56. So Palantir is literally half the price of Snowflake right now at better numbers. This is a no brainer. And while the stock price stayed absolutely idle from 2021 for the past three years, look at the institutional shareholding. For the past three years, from June of 2021 until now, the institutional shareholding of Palantir has doubled from 424 million all the way up to 857 million. So while the price stayed flat and the business massively improved, the institutional shareholders like Vanguard, like Goldman Sachs, like Berkeley's, all of them kept buying and buying Palantir while you were selling. And now we're getting to the interesting part. So this is my five year price prediction for Palantir. What Palantir will be worth in five years. So my most conservative case right now is $35. Now on the middle ground, it's a $105 stock, which gives us a 365% upside for the next five years. And on the optimistic side, it's a $174 stock in five years, giving us a 674% upside. Now obviously these are predictions based on my opinion, which might be inaccurate, might be wrong, might be the ramblings of amendment. It's not financial advice. Just take it as my opinion. Now look, Look, if I run a DCF for the current valuation of Palantir, this is what I have. So I have Palantir currently, currently valued, not five years, right now as $42.2. So right now, for me, the true value of Palantir, the intrinsic value of Palantir is $42.21 as it stands here in our DCF model here in Stock MVP. And obviously, you can do your own checks right here and you can run your own compare tool. For example, you can compare it with Cloudflare other companies. Do your own thing. Stock-MVP.com. You can try it out for one week for free. Use it. You will love it. I promise. I built it for you guys because I am exactly like you. I'm a retail investor. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom Nash. Join the academy. Learn how to become a better investor. Learn how to do DCF. Learn how to actually do these things for yourself so you don't have to feed off stock picks. And of course, join a free to join Discord, discord.gg slash Tom Nash. We would love to have you on there. We're almost at 10,000 people. Come join us. Come talk about Palantir and other stocks. We'll see you in the next one.